Hey, what's going on guys? It's ETA Prime back here again. Today I'm going to be taking a look at the Game Boy Zero Handheld Edition by 32T. Now I do have one in my possession. I have put it together. I didn't do a build video or anything like that. I did take some pictures of when I was building it. It's fairly easy to assemble. You just need some soldering skills. 60 bucks get you the kit here. You will need to provide your own Raspberry Pi Zero or Raspberry Pi Zero W, an SD card, and a battery. We're going to scroll down here. As you can see, it's a dual layer PCB. And what you're going to do is solder your Raspberry Pi Zero right here. It does have a charger built in, battery input here, and you can add sound. So as it sits right now, these do not contain any sound, but he does ship out a sound card. You will have to disassemble, resolder some wires so you can get a 3.5 millimeter audio jack on the Pi Zero. You can pretty much place it anywhere you'd like. I'll show you where I place mine. I really like this. It has nice micro switches. These aren't going to feel like real SNES buttons, but for an industrial looking Raspberry Pi Zero handheld, this thing is pretty sweet. And it's hard to beat this price. $60, you can add a plexi case for $5. So $65 gets you this kit. You'll need a Raspberry Pi Zero or Zero W, a battery, and an SD card. Now I know some of you guys are going to be like, oh my gosh, they're charging $65 for this. If you can build me something like this for 65 bucks, I'll buy three right now. PM me. So I've been using this for a few days now. I really love the look of it. I have changed a couple of the things out like these plastic spacers here for the two PCBs. I changed them out for some brass spacers that I had laying around. There's a couple little mods you can do to this. I want to show you how this thing performs and I did take some pictures of me putting it together. I'm going to leave links in the description to Tendi. You can buy one right now if you're interested. This was a Kickstarter. It was fully backed, but now he's got them in stock, ready to go. It has evolved over time, as you can see, these little tiny micro switches. But I love the feel of this thing. It has a 2.8 inch TFT LCD Game Boy button layout interface. It does have buttons on the back, L1, L2, R1, and R2. Power switch, LED indicator, TP4056 battery charger module built in, and battery connector. Shoulder and trigger buttons, L1, L2, R1, R2, LED indicator. What you'll need that's not included, Raspberry Pi Zero or Zero W. A 3.7 LiPo battery up to 3500 milliamp hour will fit between the boards. An SD card. He does have an image already set up. You can download, flash to an SD card, and get this thing up and running in no time. Let's go ahead and move over to my workbench real quick. I have put this together. I want to show you the process I went through. All right, so here we are with the finished product. I do not own the plexiglass case for it, so mine's all opened up. One thing I would suggest is to go ahead and put a screen protector on this thing. Got the buttons on the back, 3.5 millimeter audio jack out over here. You do have access to the HDMI and the USB port. I also added a little heat sink. I love the feel of it. It's really compact. I'm gonna go ahead and boot this thing up. I will be plugging in a portable speaker so I can capture the audio. Just using this little 808, love this speaker. And I have these 90 degree 3.5 millimeter audio jacks. As you can see, it's pretty out of the way. When you're holding this thing, it's not gonna get in your way. If it was sticking straight out, it definitely would. Plug this in, turn it on, and let it boot. So I did test out Neo Geo, and I cannot get Pi FBA working. LR Final Burn Alpha works fine, but it's a little laggy on the Pi Zero. I'm going to try to get Pi FBA fixed up, but for now I got some Game Boy, SNES, NES. Got our directional buttons, start, select. Around back we have all of our trigger buttons. You will need to get used to using these. They're in an odd location, but a lot of the stuff that runs on the Raspberry Pi Zero didn't utilize trigger buttons except for like SNES and a few other emulators that work well on the Zero. You will get used to them. Just mess with it for a few hours and you shouldn't have any trouble. I do want to get Pi FBA working on this because it runs really good on the Raspberry Pi Zero W. LR Final Burn Alpha does run, but a lot of the games do lag on the Zero because it's only a single core CPU. We're going to go with NES real quick. Adventure Island 3. 
Hopefully I can hold this steady enough so you guys can enjoy a little bit of gameplay here. As for input latency, this is running off the GPIO, so it should be very, very minimal. But for me, when I'm using the Raspberry Pi, I do expect a little bit of lag every once in a while. I have over 35 different controllers, some of them work better than others. I can tell you right now, this is totally playable. I don't notice any input lag, but over the years of using the Raspberry Pi in different emulators, I've learned to compensate for it, so it's not really a big issue for me. Unless it's totally noticeable, and it is not on this unit, I can tell you that right now. I am using his pre bell image, everything works great. If you want to play N64, PlayStation, and things like that, the Pi Zero is just not going to cut it for you. This is more for Game Boy, NES, SNES, and even Neo Geo using that Pi FPA. There are a lot of other emulators that work great on the Pi Zero. You can play literally thousands of games on here with no trouble at all. Moving on over to the original Game Boy. I'm going to be testing out Ninja Turtles here. I really love the look and feel of this handheld. The size is perfect for throwing it in your pocket, but make sure you put a screen protector on this thing. The only downside that I'm seeing so far is no built-in speaker. You could always add one with a little amp from Adafruit or something like that, but I opted just to use the 3.5mm audio jack. I can always use headphones. So I really wanted to test out some SNES. I went with Mega Man X. Since I'm using the Raspberry Pi Zero W, it does have Bluetooth and Wi-Fi built in, so I can transfer my ROMs over Wi-Fi. I can also connect a Bluetooth controller, and that's what I'm going to do next. I want to set this down so I'm not shaking the screen around and you can see some gameplay. There are some SNES games that do lag on the Pi Zero, but you can always throw a GPU overclock and a little heatsink on it. I added one on this build because I didn't want it to downclock if it got too hot, because I know I'm going to be using this for hours. I did hand this off to my six-year-old daughter. She was playing some Mario. Then my four-year-old son wanted to get a hold of it. I was a little scared, felt a little fragile, but he played it for about two hours, didn't break the thing, and he was mashing on these buttons. The whole unit is pretty durable, and I actually really like the feel of these momentary switches. They're very high quality, they feel great, it's nothing like a real SNES controller, but I can't complain for the price tag. When it's all said and done, you might have about $90 into this. The kit itself is $60, you need a Raspberry Pi Zero, you'll also need a battery and an SD card. Depending on what you have on hand, you could get away with building one of these for like 80 bucks. So I've connected a PS4 controller to the Bluetooth on the Raspberry Pi Zero W. I want to test out another SNES game, one of my favorites, Hagani. I wanted to leave this stationary so you could see some gameplay without me shaking it around, so I opted to connect a controller to it and just set it down. If you've never played Hagani The Final Conflict, definitely give it a shot. It's a really great game. It's kind of shinobi mixed with Ninja Gaiden. I've tried to get my hands on a real cart. I've seen them sell back in the day for like $200, but now they're going for $800 to $1,300 for the real original Hagani cart. You can buy repros of this game all day for like $25. You can even make one for about $12. So overall, it's been a really enjoyable experience using this thing and putting it together. It's fairly easy as long as you have some soldering skills. The price tag is spot on. I mean, people definitely need to make money. $60 for the kit isn't bad. All you need is that battery SD card and a Pi Zero. So I can definitely recommend one of these. If you have soldering skills, this is an awesome little option for you. If you want to build your own from scratch, you can always do that. Be my guest. You can buy all the parts, put it together. If you think this is a little too expensive and you think you can do better, I will buy your kits from you. Please, like I said, leave it in the comments. If you can make something like this for $65, I will buy three of them right now. I really appreciate you guys watching. If you could, hit that like button and subscribe. 
I'll leave a link to the GitHub where you can get his image also. If you want to go ahead and order one of these, get your SD card set up for the day it comes. I'll have that link down below. Like always, thanks for watching.